Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I know a lot of you want to feel closer to God. I tell you, don't need to look for a feeling. Just follow Jesus Christ, man. That's all you got to do. Follow Jesus Christ, okay? And I try to help you do that every day. Um, as you see the rise of the Antichrist happening right now in your face, okay? You're watching it go down. It's my job as your pastor, your teacher, to warn you according to what? The Word of God. Exactly what God says about this man that will be in the political realm because, of course, the common sense, he's a world leader, okay? So that makes it in a political sense. But we don't talk politics here, as all of you know. Maybe one person doesn't seem to understand that, but everybody else does. Because to talk politics is to talk about things that are going on between countries, okay? And that's not something that we do here. We only teach you the Word of God. And the Word of God, Jesus teaches about this man of sin, okay? And you're watching him rise right now. You're watching many of the church worship a man who is the most devious man I've ever seen in my life. And he denies the need of salvation in Jesus Christ. Now, some people will say, oh, yeah, but God is using him. Well, God uses the devil. Come back with another one. God is protecting him. God protects the devil. Come back with another one. Meaning, you can't kill the devil. Nobody can. Only God, period. That's it. Okay, but this man of sin is part of the plan. Does that mean you should worship him? That you should encourage and uh, side in with him? Well, many of you will side in with the devil. There's no doubt about that. Jesus said you will. And I'm watching many of you do it. You can't side in with anybody, y'all, and be on Jesus' side that denies the need of salvation in Jesus. It's as simple as that. There's nothing else you can say. You're, it's deranged. Jesus said, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind. I see a lot of people that has a reprobate mind right now. Their soul is completely lost into the hands of Satan. And that's my job as your pastor to put this in front of you so you can make a chance to repent. And we're going to talk about that word here in a minute. And a lot of you need to repent. Okay? And that's Bible. Okay? So these words that I'm going to teach you get you a fresh, clean notebook. Fresh, clean notebook. You'll want to do that for this. And I'm going to give you about 50-some Hebrew words, not all today. I'll be breaking them down on different days. Different days, you'll look for your different word. Write down what it means so that you can understand Jesus a little bit better. You want to experience more of heaven here on earth? Then let's understand what Jesus is talking about a little bit better. Get to know Jesus just a little bit better. Okay? And he knows what these words mean. He spoke them. All right? So... We're going to give you some Hebrew words that you can uh, pray and understand more about God. Okay, so the first word you're going to write down is Shema. Shema. And you want to write it down just like this. S-H-A, Shema. 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 Go ahead and write that down in your notebook. Shema. So, that means to hear. Shema means to hear. Write that down. To hear. Okay? You ever wake up in a fog of stress and anxiety and you're not able to focus because you're being pulled in different directions, all kinds of directions. You ever feel like that? You got the stress of work or uh, maybe some unsolved issues at home. Uh, maybe some un unanswered emails or something. Your sickness or tired is tired or some financial pressure. There's so many other things in today's world that can leave a lot of you feeling flat, right? And un unable to focus when you get up in the morning. I hear a lot of people saying that I can't focus in the morning. But I'll tell you something, stress and all that might seem like a, like a big issue right now, but maybe there's an ancient, ancient solution. Are you with me? Maybe there's an ancient solution. Let me pull my chair up. And we want to look at these ancient solutions because, boy, um, there was a lot of knowledge in the ancient times. For thousands, and th for thousands of years, the Jewish believers spoke it, they, spoke it, they, they, they have a spoken prayer. The minute that they wake, that they woke up in the morning, they would pray that prayer and focus their attention on God rather than the attention on the, the mess they're going through in the world. 
So the first thing we should do is focus our attention on God when you wake up in the morning. Not on the world, on God. Write that down. First thing I should do is focus my attention on God, not the things of the world, first thing in the morning. Okay, and this prayer is called the Shema, which is Hebrew. It's a Hebrew word that means hear or listen. It means to hear I write this down. or listen. You know how you say it. To hear or listen. Shema. To hear or listen. Giving you a minute to write that down. Okay. There's a prayer from Deuteronomy 6, 4 9 that speaks on that. Let's read that. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, Talk about it when you walk along the road and when you lay down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them down on the door frames of your homes and on your gates. Why would he say that? Now the Jews, the ancient Jews actually took that literal in today and they literally put it all over their physical body, but yet their hearts are far from them. So let's back up. He said, Impress them on your children. That means make sure you teach your children the ways of God every day. Make it very important to them. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you're sitting around talking about stuff. Talk about God and his word. When you're walking down the road or somewhere with your family, talk about God. Okay? Uh, when, you, when you lay down and when you get up. That means 24 hours a day. 24 hours. Talk about God constantly in all of your conversations, okay? He said, tie them as symbols on your hands. Why would he say tie them? People really tie these uh, bands around their arm. Bible verses, no. He means everything that you do with your hands, work, praise, worship, uh, serving, no matter what you do. Do it with the love of God and God's by obeying God's word because you want to. And bind them on your foreheads. What's behind your forehead? Your mind. What does that mean? It means set your mind on things above. Set it there. Doesn't mean you have to take Bible verses to your head. It means set your mind on things above. Make sure what you do with your hands, your spirit, right? Make sure it's Christ-like. Make sure you do it for the love of God. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. You know, when I was with Jesus Christ, there was a, a, a fence in front of that barn, and there was a gate in the middle of that fence. I'm a gatekeeper. It means I'm supposed to protect you and God's word, God's people and God's word, and that I will do to the death, okay? So it means take your walk with God very, very, very seriously every day, okay? So the word Shema applies to action. Write that down. And, and very similarly, we understand this idea when Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. Okay? Well, that was his way of telling his followers to listen. Listen to my words and obey. That's what that meant. Listen and obey. To he who has ears, let him hear. That means listen and obey. That's what Jesus was saying. That's what he means today too. Okay? When God says Shema, okay, you know what it is? It's an invitation for you to listen, uh, for you to respond, for you to appreciate, for you to understand, and for you to act. God always wants you to act, but he wants you to understand what you're acting on, okay? So as a Jew, Jesus would have uh, 
prayed at the Shema every single morning as a way of committing himself to, to God and, and listening to his word that day. Okay? So I wonder how so many of the attitudes that we have would change. Ask yourself that. How will my attitude change? Ask yourself this. How will my attitude change if the first thing I did when I wake up every morning was to commit myself to a loving God and listen to his word? Don't forget, commit myself to a loving God. Okay? Now, the next one. Let me get my Bible turned really quick. To Psalms. Okay. The next word is shuv. 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 Sorry about that. Hold on, my thing. My tripod is broke. Shuv. Shuv. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, there you go. Shuv. Spell it S H O O V. Shuv. Copy that down. That means to turn back. Shuv. To turn back. There's a an old English word called repent. Okay. We usually define that usually um, in just a person's not Hebrew. That just the only English word we usually define <clears throat> repent. Um, they would define it as regret or being sorry, right? But the Hebrew word that's translated as repentance comes from the word shuv. Okay, and it means to turn, or more accurately, to turn back, turn around, turn around. You know, God was always calling the Israelites. To turn around. You notice the Bible doesn't say he was calling the Jews to turn around. It says he was calling the Israelites to turn around. And we'll talk about that later. There's a difference between a Jew and an Israelite. Big difference, okay? But he would always call the Israelites, turn around. Turn, turn, follow me. Don't follow you. When you follow you, you follow the devil. When you follow yourself, you're against me. Turn around and follow me. Turn around. Right? All the time. Repentance, if you want to know what that is, um, I told you there's a, there's a heart. Let me get my red marker. You have your feelings of guilt and I, I want to do different. So in order, the first thing you have to do is acknowledge that. That's part of confession. You have two steps. You have confess, confess, and repent. That equals salvation. That's a heart. I just drew around that. Okay? There's two steps. That's one plus two. Okay? I mean, one plus one equals two. There's two things you need to do to be saved. Two. Not one. Two. Not one. Two. You can't repent Unless you decide and you understand that what you've been doing is wrong. You have to confess first, y'all. Confession has to come first. Acknowledging that you need Jesus and then changing to become like him. That's the process, okay? So, repentance, it's when confession, confession. Let me put this right here. Put this. Confession. Equals uh, feeling guilty. Uh, feeling guilty or regret. You're confessing because you're feeling guilty about something or you regretting something. This is confession. So you say the words, right? Because your heart means it. Jesus, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. And I need you. You cannot repent unless you first confess and recognize. You understand? So repentance is more than a feeling of guilt and regret. It's making a course correction in your life. So repent 
is changing to become like Jesus. That'll take the rest today to the rest of your life to do that. Now, this, what did he say to do with this? These two right here, these two become one. Abide. Continue to do this. He said, continue, do not stop. Because you can stop. Why, there's no other reason for God to tell you to turn around and repent if you couldn't stop and lose it all or give it up. But you can, and, and many people do. Okay? So this repentance is changing. You become like Jesus Christ. It's, 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 it's you deciding. You making the ultimate decision to turn away from where you're currently headed and, and turn back towards God. When you're not walking towards God, you're walking towards hell. I'll tell you that straight up. So imagine you're in your car and you're headed toward a specific destination when you make a wrong turn. Okay? Your GPS, what does it tell you? It says recalculating or redirecting, right? And then it asks you, make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Well, that is repentance, okay? It's making a spiritual spiritual u-turn stopping all the worldly thoughts the worldly mouth crap that y'all got coming out your mouth especially the ones coming on here with the nasty uh attitude saying you're a this you're a that but you call yourself a christian but you're saying you're a this and you're a that um god says change that because that's the devil spirit you're putting out and you're trying to blame that spirit on god it's not good make a u-turn Make a U-turn. U-turn. Turn around. Turn. Hit a different direction, okay? So, on a spiritual level, let's put it like this. A change in a man's conduct, okay? Brings about a change in God's judgment. You want to put it that way. So, your conduct is going to decipher how you will be judged, period, by God. Okay, remember that. When we repent, when we repent, we turn away from the darkness and we turn towards the light. That's what we do. You know what? God promises to take control of that wheel and direct us toward his light as we are driving our car his direction. Okay, so ask yourself today, do you need to repent? Let's go to Psalms 80, 14 through 15. Write that down, for example. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see and visit this thine. And the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made a strong, that you made strong for yourself. Okay, there's many scriptures in the Word of God that tells you to return. Oh, I can give you a million of them. I'll just pull one out of the hat. Return. Return. You know what that means. Turn around. Actually repent. So, shuv means repent. Shuv means repent. Jesus said, if you confess your faults to one another... If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. If you confess, feel guilty about it and say it with your mouth. Regret it and say it with your mouth. I'm sorry. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. In your heart, that means what you just said up here is for real. So now you're going to show it with your actions. See, that's how you're saved, y'all. Not just because you say the words. Got to be some action to follow that. Got to be some shema behind the shuv. Got to be shuv and shema. Okay? Action. Repent. All right? There you go. Thank you guys so much for what you have done for our ministry and those of you that's helping us. Um, somebody messaged Igor. I don't know who you are. Said you wanted to help our ministry. Everything you need for that's in the description on the video. Just look under this. Look right underneath this box. You'll see where it says more. Click on it, and all that, what you, how you can help us will come up. 
Or you can go to our website, JesusDoers.com. It's all there. Everything you need is there. Um, the location in Africa we help every month is there. All that's there. All right? Thank you so much. If you use PayPal, please make sure to use friends and family, not goods and services. I have to refund it back because um, that will get me and you both in trouble because I'm not a business. Okay? A gift is a gift. All right? Thank you so much. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys tonight in the barn at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, how do you get to the barn? JesusDoers.com. Scroll down till you see the big red barn. The link is there. Click the link. It'll take you to our Google Meet room. That's my barn. Okay, and uh, then we'll be back at 9 o'clock live on YouTube. Thank you all. God bless you. Be looking for more words later this week in Jesus' name. God bless.